is that the step pyramid, such as at Saqqara, mm -hmm. was an early experiment mm -hmm. in pyramid construction mm -hmm. by the Egyptians, and that over the course of hundreds of years, they finally developed the incredible structures which are literally behind you. Mm -hmm. Can you please address this question? Absolutely. First, we look at it from a totally different perspective, from the perspective of cycles. Five stages of the sun repeating cycles. So we reject the idea of linear evolution, that everything moves in a straight line from the primitive to the complex. That is obvious. So anyone who studies, even Egyptology, sees that, doesn't, that it's not in effect here. If you go back to what they call the Old Kingdom period, some of the finest construction, some of the finest glyphs, some of the finest jewelry, we go forward in time, Middle Kingdom, New Kingdom, and it degenerates, except for certain periods we call Renaissance periods, like the 12th Dynasty, which was the Middle Kingdom, 18th Dynasty, which is the New Kingdom. They seem to want to go back to the old ways, to what was the New Kingdom. So what we see in the New Kingdom is they are also trying to go back to an old way, a previous time. So Hakim gives us an idea that there were previous cycles. So what we're looking at here is pre-dynastic, pre-historical original constructions, some going back 50,000, 30,000, to the beginning of this cycle 65,000 years ago. So the structures behind me are much, much older than the one they say is newer, the step pyramid. The step pyramid is not even a true pernetta. These are pernetters behind me, houses of energy, houses of nature. The step pyramid at Saqqara is a symbolic per ka. No one was buried there but a symbolic tomb. That's what the, the, the so-called dynastic people began to think the pyramids were. They forgot that they were machines, that, and it, that knowledge was lost. So what we see when we go out in the sites, it is the foundation of what we teach as chemetology. We call it transformation of the sites. We all, my, my research partner and I, Bob Vodder, when we first started to work with Hakim in the late 60s, we characterized his teaching as peeling away the layers of an onion. First you have the surface layer, which is your, com your, com your current Islamic layer. Underneath the Islamic layer is a Coptic Christian layer. Under the Coptic Christian layer is a Greek, a Roman layer. Under the Roman layer is a Greek layer. Under the Greek layer is a Jewish layer, which very few people know about. Under the Jewish layer is the so-called dynastic layer, which Egyptology thinks all there is. We peel away the dynastic layer, and there is ancient Kemet. And that's what's seen with the brilliance of a man like Chris Dunn, with yourself, people who understand manufacturing, woodworking, stone carving, can see what is ancient Kemet, machined without a doubt. The highest advanced machining, working in the hardest stone ever was on this planet. Diamond tools, carborundum, using sonic waves, using microwaves, all different advanced technologies, which we can document, not theory, not speculation, with solid evidence. And we can look right beside it with the brilliance of someone like Yusuf Awiyan, who can see it, so right next to it, you could see where they started to transform the site, where the dyna old kingdom came in and put hieroglyphs and started to transform. Then you can see the new kingdom came in and started to transform. We can even take it to we see a Roman transformation of the sites. We can even see in Roman temples red granite pillars from ancient Kemet. Yesterday we went to Old Cairo, saw two of the most beautiful mosques in the world. There is red granite pillars and alabaster from ancient Kemet. So it was obvious that every layer of culture that came in here saw the ancient Kemetian civilization, the magnificent structures which we see behind us, and wanted to reuse them, transform them, put them in their culture, continuing that flow of knowledge to want to connect to the ancients. And so when we analyze the sites, we can clearly take people in the field and show the transformations. Here is the ancient, no writing, perfect flat surfaces, perfect rounded corners, radiuses on statues which are unbelievable, can only be done by bilateral symmetrically, which means that it's machined to the highest degree, highest color glosses. Chris Dunn measures tolerances of two ten thousandths of an inch, the flattest, smoothest surface we've ever seen from any culture on this planet yet studied. And yet we can see when other people came in and transformed crude chopping, crude glyphs, crude changing it, and that is the basis of what we teach. Obviously, ancient civilization that was used and transformed many, many, many times in many cultures, and continuing today with the Islamic culture, he uses pieces of the stone to build mosques, to build different areas. A whole continuum for thousands and tens of thousands of years, and we can show that continuum. Again, not theory, not speculation, based with solid, hard evidence from people who know, geologists, physicists, chemists, stonemasons, stonecutters, people who work with the material, understand the material, not stuck with the paradigms of academic Egyptology, which says it's just crude copper tools, 
drills and the stone balls bashing and, and doing this. It's absolutely insane and ridiculous. You know it. Everyone that we've brought on this tour has known it. Everyone who has eyes to see can see it. It could not possibly be done by the methods they propose, by, as Chris Dunn says, by the toolkit that's left to us by the dynastic people could not accomplish the job. We have yet to find exactly the tools. We have some ideas, some pieces we can put together. Obviously stone tools, obviously vibratory tools. Chris Dunn calls it impact ultrasonic machining, working with many, many different saws, giant wheels, different types of technology. But the evidence is obvious. Every time we go to the sites, we just gather more evidence for what we're teaching.